Hi guys, this is Sebastian again from CodingTheSmartWay.com and in this new tutorial I'd like to give you an introduction of how to build an Angular application with Redux. And um, as you might uh, already know, Redux is a, is a library which um, introduces central state management in your application. So if your application grows bigger and uh, starts to consist of multiple components and you want to share uh, the uh, state or let's say the data between components, um, it's very easy if you introduce central state management and Redux is a pattern which um, makes it very easy. And uh, so let's in this video explore the building blocks of a Redux and then see how um, you can start an Angular 4 application from scratch, a real world uh, sample application and implement Redux within your application to share the state between components. Okay, so let's first take a look at the sample application we are going to build in this tutorial so that you can see what's uh, the, um, the outcome. Um, this is a sample application. It's an Angular 4 application and you can see it's a simple to do um, manager. Um, we have um, two components here. We have one component um, which displays information like last update, total items, and uh, include a button to delete all um, to-do items from the list. And then we have a second component which includes uh, um, a simple form here to enter new to-do items um, and uh, which contains the list output. So you can see how this application is working. If I maybe add um, um, some items here, so let's say want to do is finish implementation um it's me who is responsible then i click on create and you can see it's added here to the list um, of to do's and here i have the information to do description responsible and priority um, and i have a delete button so i can delete that one item here um, maybe i can add um, another to do item here um, let's say write tutorial and put it on high so you can see it here, um, another another row here in my table. Um, and now I can hit um, delete here. So um, you can see the element is removed from that list. I can insert it again. And if I here hit on, um, on any of those buttons and uh, initiate uh, a user action, the last update information here is updated. And you can see the total number of items is always updated to the total number of items displayed here in the list. So let's uh, add um, uh, another item here. Um, and you can see again updated. Now it says total items three. Um, so this is part of the central state management. I'm using multiple components, but all components access um, a central data store and so the information is always updated in all of the places here in the application. So I can hit delete all and then everything is gone. You can see it here is the list is empty now, total items is zero again. Um, that's basically the application we are going to build with Redux um, um, implemented in that application. Okay, so before actually starting with the implementation part of this tutorial, let's quick take a look at the main building blocks of Redux. And um, Redux is a library which is often associated with React. Um, as you might know, React is also um, a, a, web, a JavaScript web framework for building a single page a web application. But Redux in general is a library which can be used with any modern JavaScript based web framework like Angular. Um, and um, Redux is, um, is a general concept, so it can be used with any framework. And uh, the building blocks uh, Redux introduces are always the same. So it makes sense now to, before actually start implementing, uh, take a look at the main building blocks. So you can uh, see it here. Um, Redux organizes your application state in a store. Um, and uh, this is a single data structure in your application. 
the components of your application, then read the state uh, of the application from that store. So the state is managed by, by the store and the store is never mutated directly. That's important. Instead, an action or actions are dispatched to the store um, and then those actions are handed over to a reducer function and uh, that reducer function is taking care. It creates a new application state, which uh, then contains the updates the action um, um, is making to the data and then returning that new state. And this new state is then replacing the old state in the store. So the state is not mutated. Always a new state with the updates included is generated by the reducer and then again returned to the store and all the components um, which read the state from the store, um, get notified and can make use of uh, that updated set of data. So the Redux website can be found at redux.js.org. So if you would like to take a look at uh, the Redux framework and go into all the details, you can always uh, take a look here at the website. It has a detailed documentation. It's explaining all the basics you need to know. It's also explaining advanced stuff and you will get uh, um, examples along the way. So just take a look at the website if you would like to dive deeper into Redux. Okay, so now that you have a basic understanding of what Redux and central state management is, let's directly start with the implementation part and start building our sample Angular application with the Redux pattern applied. So the first step to initiate a new Angular 4 project is, um, and that's the easiest way, is to use the Angular command line interface. I have already installed the Angular CLI. Um, and uh, the Angular command line interface gives you a new command, which is called ng, and you can use that command with the option new and followed by the project name, let's say angular redux uh, dash to do. Um, and a new Angular project is generated, as you can see here. It's downloading the template and then installing all the dependencies uh, via npm here. This takes a second. Okay, here we are. You can see everything has been installed successfully and now we can change into that newly created um, uh, project directory. And within that project, a directory just try out that everything has been installed and is working by starting up the development web server which is done by ng surf command so um, this command is starting up the web server um, it's bundling all the stuff in your application and then it's running your application on um, localhost of course port 4200 so here you can see it's compiled successfully and then I can change back to the browser and see that it's running here on localhost port 4200. Uh, that's the Angular uh, for um, um, default application. Um, and that gives you the feedback that everything is uh, running and uh, ready for um, being um, extended with um, our application requirements. Okay, I have already opened up the project folder here in Visual Studio Code. Um, now the first thing we need to do is we need to add um, Redux to our project as a library. And um, to do that, I'm opening up the integrated terminal here. So you can see it here. And now I am using the npm command and uh, let's say npm install. Um, we need Redux itself and then we need a package uh, which is called angular-redux um, slash store. And that is the um, Redux Angular implementation we will be using. There are different Redux implementation for Angular available. Um, the add angular-redux slash store implementation is an implementation um, which is very easy to understand because it's um, in most cases pure Redux. So I'm using that implementation here. 
Okay, then let's say save so that both dependencies are added to our package.json file here in the project. And um, I'm hitting return here. Um, you can see it here, it's downloading both packages and installing both packages into the node underscore modules folder within our project. So here we are, um, both dependencies have been added successfully. Okay, so let's begin the implementation by adding a new file within the src app folder. And let's say new file and I'm naming that file with store.ts. So we will be implementing the Redux store first. And um, now, first of all, we are implementing it in a very simple way. So I'm saying export interface i app state. So, and I'm leaving that interface empty for the moment. So that is our state object. And later on, we will be adding the properties we would like to manage here in the central state to that interface type. And I'm implementing um, um, as well a function here, which is my reducer function. So I call it root reducer. And uh, I'm defining that this function should take two parameters, um, the old state and the action, which is dispatched. Okay, and then I'm saying return state. So that is the most simple way of implementing a root reducer function or a reducer function because the reducer now simply takes the old state and returns it without making any um, any changes to a new state object. But of course, this is what we will implementing next. Okay, so now I would like to add the properties here to the iApp state interface. And uh, basically we do need two properties here to manage um, the uh, data which is needed for implementing our to-do sample application. First of all, we need to have an array of to-dos, so I'm calling it to-dos, and then say, okay, it's of type i to-do, and it needs to be an array. Of course, the i to-do interface has not been implemented yet, and that is something we will be doing in the next uh, steps. Um, that's the first one, and then a second property which is needed here is the last um, update property because we would like to print out, um, as you saw before, uh, in the application when the list of to-dos has last been updated. And that is a property where we are storing um, the date information in. So it needs to be of type date. Okay, and then I'm adding um, another um, object here. And this needs to be a const object and I call it initial state um, and it should be of type i app state and I'm defining this initial state here because I'd like to um, assign the values to uh, the uh, state properties which should be set initially when we later on in um, um, attach uh, that store to our application we can use the initial state const object here uh, from that file to initialize the state with um, uh, the values which are uh, part of that object. So I'm saying to do's needs to be an empty array initially and last update as no update has happened needs to be now. Okay. Now you can see it's underlining I to do uh, red and you can also see that uh, problem here in the problem step cannot find name i to do uh, that's quite clear because we have not um, implemented the i to do interface um, up until now and that is what we now need to um, to do um, i'm creating a new file first again here in the app folder and this file is named to do.ts and uh, here in that file i'm implementing that missing interface so i'm saying 
uh, export interface I to do and then I'm adding the properties which I need to um, make available for every single to-do item the first one is um, ID of type number the second is I need a description here needs to be of type string then I would like to have a responsible information for every to-do element of type string then I'd like to have a priority and an is completed flag which is of type of boolean okay now my interface is available here in todo.ts and now I can go back to store.ts and add the following import statement here on top so I'm importing uh, that interface I to do from um, to do okay now you can see the problem is gone um, no uh, red underline here uh, I to do is now implemented and available um, and um, I have defined which properties should be available for each a single to do item in my application. Now, the next thing we need to do is to activate um, the store and the state um, for our application. And um, this is done in um, app.module.ts. Here we need to add an import statement first. So let's add it here on top. It's import um, ng redux and um, ng redux module uh, from um, the angular um, dash redux store package okay then we do need to add a second import statement and we need to import um, i app state root reducer and our initial state object from store ts like so and with those imports available we can now add the constructor to the class implementation of app module and use the constructor to um, inject the ng redux service here to our application and that is done by defining ng redux parameter here for the constructor which is of type ng redux and that is um, of type i app state um, like so and now within the constructor we can um, use the ngx redux service object so ng redux dot and call the configure store method here which takes two parameters the first parameter is our uh, reducer function and the second parameter is the initial state of our store and the initial state should be um, what is inside our initial underscore, underscore state object so we are handing initial underscore state over here to the configure store call okay and um, that is the code we need to set our store um, with our reducer function um, active in our application and at the same time initialize our store with the uh, property values which are um, inside of initial underscore state okay so now we can uh, go back to the browser and check um, what's the state of the application here and you can see we get back one error node provider for ng redux and the reason uh, this error occurs is that we need to add ng redux module here to the imports array of the ng module decorator here as well so if i 
add <coughs> that module here, okay. And then recheck the application here in the browser. You can see now it's working, the error is gone. Um, our store is set up successfully in our application. And um, now we can continue uh, implementation with defining um, the action types which we want to use um, in our application. So <clears throat> the reducer function should be able to handle all our action types um, which are used throughout our application and each action type is identified by a simple string. Um, but um, it's always advisable to not use that string directly. Instead, we will prepare um, constants containing that string so that we can use those constants uh, throughout our application. Um, and uh, that makes it a little bit easier um, to not uh, include any typos in the string. Uh, so let's uh, start. I'm creating a new file here inside um, the app folder and uh, I named that file um, actions.ts and within that file um, I need to define uh, four action types in total. So let's start with the first one. So I'm using the const um, keyword here. The first one is the add to do action and I set it equal to the string add to do. Um, second one should be uh, toggle to do so that we can toggle between um, is completed set to true and is completed set to false for every to do item and I'm assigning uh, the string identifier here of toggle underscore to do so the next one is remove to do And the string is again remove to do. And the last action the user is able to dispatch um, to the store is the remove all to do's actions, um, which is set to the string remove underscore all underscore to do's. Okay. Uh, having prepared those action types here in actions.ts, we can now go back in our file store.ts and first of all import uh, those uh, four action types here. So I'm importing add to do, toggle to do, remove to do, and remove underscore all underscore to do's like so from our actions ts file okay like so now we can make use of uh, those action types and add the implementation for our reducer function uh, here in root uh, reducer and, um, and the first thing I'd like to add here is a switch statement and the switch statement is um, implemented for action.type because in action.type uh, we get the action type uh, string which um, has been dispatched to the store and is now handled by our reducer function here. And um, the switch statement now makes use of our um, defined string constants. And I'm using the case statement here now for all of the four um, defined action types. So the first is again, add to do. Let's add the case uh, statements here. So the second is uh, toggle to do. The next um, again remove 
to do. And the last case uh, statement here is for remove all to do's. Okay. So, okay, let's I'll start with implementing the first case here, add to do. And what we now need to do for every case here is to uh, create a new state object where uh, the changes are applied and then return this new state object uh, so that it is replaced in the store um, and becomes active. So first of all, add to do. So we will start here with um, action dot to do. Um, dot id so in action dot to do we can expect to um, get handed over the new to do item which should be added um, to our state and then uh, let's update that id information here just with state dot to do dot length plus one and then we are returning the new state object and the new state object is created by using object.assign. Uh, we are starting with an empty object here and then we are um, adding the old state and we are adding um, the new um, the new to do item here. Um, so let's add it here to the to do's array by using state dot to do's. So that is the old state object, state dot to do's, and then concat. And with the concat method, we can now um, concatenate a new array, um, or let's say a new object which contains our um, new. Um, to do element. And again, I'm calling here the object.assign method to create a new object. And then pass in an empty object again and then say action.to do. Okay, and then we are updating the last update property here as well with a new date <coughs> so that it contains the actual date now. Um, okay. So that is the first case. Now let's implement the second case, um, toggle to do. So um, toggle to do, we need first to retrieve um, the um, to do item for which the is completed uh, flag should be toggled. And we do that by defining here um, a new var to do and then saying state which contains the old state, um, then accessing the todos array and then executing the find mess as a find method. And here we are using a method um, which is uh, doing the filtering. Uh, we are using the fat error syntax here. So t uh, becomes uh, t id equals action dot id. Um, because we are expecting to get in action.id the ID of the to do element which should be uh, set to is complete or is complete should be removed. So then we have the to do item available here and uh, then we can retrieve the index of the um, um, array for that element of course. So let's say index equals state to do's index off and then we're handing over that to do element and we are getting in return the index. So now we need to create our new state object with the is completed uh, property um, being updated for that specific element in that array. Um, and again, I'm using the return statement here and then I'm calling object.assign to create a new object which uh, first of all consists of an empty object. So that is the basis here. And then we are adding the old state here. And now we are um, handing over the object with the changes we would like to apply. Okay, so within that new object, of course, we need the deduce property again. And that is an array. And within that array now, 
we need to um, add first of all all the elements um, before the current to do element for which the is completed property should be changed and that is achieved by using um, the spread operator here and then saying the the spread operator is three dots basically and is expanding that array and then uh, selecting um, all the elements before our index and that is done by saying state dot to do's dot slice and uh, we are starting uh, with index zero and then selecting all elements um, until the index is reached okay that's the first thing we need to add here and then the second thing is um, the current to do element itself but with the updated is completed information and we do that by creating a new object here again with object assign so the old to do element and then what we would like to update is the is completed information or property um, to the opposite value so uh, exclamation mark to do is completed to turn it into the opposite and then finally we don't do not uh, need to forget uh, to add all the array elements um, after the index element and that is done in the same way like we did it um, uh, for the elements before the index um, so we are um, using the spread operator here saying state dot to do's uh, and then using slice and starting with uh, the index plus one of course so then we need to enter the last update property here as well with a new date new date value okay okay so let's go on with implementing the remove um, to do case here and now we need to remove the um, the exact one element which is handed over with that action from the to do's array and return a new object a new state object where uh, this um, array is updated and this object has been removed so how to do that uh, we are starting uh, again with a return statement here and then using object assign again to create that new object starting with an empty object here adding the old state information and then um, adding an object which contains the um, updates okay uh, the uh, to do's um, array here we are assigning um, the following thing we are saying state dot to do's which contains all uh, the um, previous to do's and then we are applying a, a filter method here and then within that filter method handing over um, again a method uh, um, which is filtering out um, that one element and that is done again here with using the fat error syntax so it's um, t.id um, is not equal to action id um, so that element is filtered out and uh, the last update information is again set to new date okay like so so last one remove all to do's is um, very simple of course we return a new state object here again uh, object assign and then for the new um, for the new object here we are setting to do's to just an empty array so that everything is removed and set the last update information to new date so that it contains the actual date information here uh, let's save it and uh, that's the complete inform uh, implementation of our reducer function and uh, now we are able to um, to use a store in our application and to 
uh, dispatch actions to our store, um, which now can be handled by our reducer function and are updating the store um, with generating a new state object which contains the changes and then setting this new state object active in the store uh, so that all the components we will be implementing in the next step rely on the same set of centrally managed information. So now that all the Redux building blocks are implemented in our Angular application, I can start in the next step um, with adding the first uh, component we would like to implement and that is a to-do overview component which um, displays the information of uh, total to-do items added to our store, the last update information, and gives the user the option to delete all the elements from uh, the uh, store. Um, okay, I'm opening up another terminal here so that I can use the ng command, uh, the Angular command line interface again to uh, generate a new component and uh, this is done um, in the following way and g g stands for generate and then i'm saying component because i would like to generate a component and i do name the component um, with uh, to do dash overview okay hitting return and um, from the output you can see that in total four new files have been created in our project structure in the new directory um, to do uh, dash overview here in the app folder as you can see here um, app.module has been updated so this component has been automatically added to our application um, that we later on can um, include that component in uh, our um, um, main uh, application component template um, but uh, first of all let's uh, implement uh, um, that component and we will start in to do dash overview dot component dot ts because that file is containing uh, the class implementation of the class to do overview component now the first thing I need to add here are a few import statements here on top. I need to import um, ng-redux again. I need to import a select decorator here from the same um, library. And um, again it's um, add angular-redux uh, slash store. Then I need to import our uh, state type, which is i app state, and this is imported from um, uh, store ts. Okay, and finally I need to import the action type I would like to use in uh, that component, and uh, the action type we do need here is. Um, remove underscore all underscore to do's from actions.ts um, okay now we would like to have access to store properties within our to do overview component and the way we can achieve that is by using the add uh, select decorator here to declare uh, class properties which are connected to uh, store properties. So let's see how that works. I'm saying add select um, and then saying to do. So um, uh, with that statement now I have an internal class property to do and um, Using that property, even in my template, I have now access to the to-dos array from the uh, um, central application store. Um, okay, so um, my property name is to-dos and the store property to which to-dos here is connected um, is also to-dos, so the matching is given by uh, the same name. If you do not want to access that property with the same name, you can um, also uh, hand over a parameter here, a string saying to do's, and then you can name it um, 
um, whatever you want. Um, but as the matching is there, we do not need to hand over that string here. We can simply say add select to do's. And in the same way, we are using the add select decorator here for gaining access to last update property um, so that we can output the last update information in the components template as well. Okay, now we need to inject um, the ng Redux service here in our to-do overview component class as well. Um, so I need to say private ng Redux uh, is of type ng Redux I have state, okay, like so. And then we are defining um, a new event handler method, which will later on connect with a uh, user event in our template. And that method is uh, called when um, the user clicks on uh, delete all, on the delete all button. And we are naming that method clear to do's. So what this method should do, it should uh, clear all the to do items within that, uh, in the store. And this is now done um, by dispatching the remove underscore all underscore to do's action to the store. And uh, the dispatching is done by using the ng redux service object here and then calling the dispatch method and handing over the action um, as an object. And the type of the action is set to remove underscore all underscore to do. So we have imported uh, that uh, constant here um, with the import statement and now we can use it here. Okay, so next we can continue uh, with implementing the corresponding template for to-do overview component. Um, but before doing so, as I'd like to use um, uh, some bootstrap for CSS classes in my template. I'd like to include bootstrap in our application here. And uh, the way I'm doing this is uh, um, going to uh, the bootstrap website here at getbootstrap.com. Um, just opening up the start page here. And on the start page, you can click on the get started link here. And uh, here in the quick start section, you can find that we need to add a link um, tag in the head section of our um, main HTML page. And we need to include some script tags in the body section. So let's do it. Uh, first copy uh, that link element here. Okay, going back to our code editor, then opening up um, index.html here and inserting it as the last element here in our um, head section, then going back to the website, copying uh, those three script elements here, going back to the editor and here uh, pasting in those three script sections. So uh, that is all, um, all, all steps which are needed to include uh, Bootstrap 4 from a content delivery network here in our application. And now I can go back to the template to do dash overview dot component dot HTML, remove the default code here in the template and start implementing uh, the template code, which we need to um, output um, the information of um, yeah, last updated and the total number of items of to do items in our application and the button um, the delete all button so that the user can click on the button and the clear to do's method is um, called. Okay, so let's get started. So first I'm using a paragraph element here, so a P element, and I'm assigning the a bootstrap class text dash write. Okay, uh, so within the paragraph I'm using um, a span element and I'm, I'm assigning uh, the class batch and uh, the class batch dash secondary. Okay, like so. And then I'm uh, saying last update here. 
and uh, then I'm outputting um, the information last update. So I need to do it in the following way, last update. Then I need to apply um, the async pipe because last update is a property which um, has been connected with the last update store property um, by using the add select decorator. And um, when I'm accessing store properties, I need to apply the async pipe here in the template um like you can see it here um okay and let's say we are applying um, another pipe here and that is a date pipe and with a date pipe i can uh, define a format in which the date information should be outputted and as a format um, i'm using the medium um, time format Okay, um, the second uh, piece of information I'd like to include here is the number of total items, total to-do items. And again, it's done in the same way. I'm accessing the to-dos um, uh, property, which is connected to the to-dos array, which is uh, managed by our store. So I need to um, apply the async pipe here again and then I'm accessing the length property of that array. Okay, finally we need to include the button here in our output and I'm assigning the class uh, btn and btn-primary um, like so. The button gets the text delete all and I'm connecting the click event here with the event handler method uh, we have defined earlier, implemented earlier, clear to do's. Okay. So if I now switch back to the browser and uh, see on the output here of my application, you can see uh, nothing has happened so far. Um, the output of um, um, to do um, overview component is not yet included here in the browser output so I need to change that next and to change that let's open up a file app component.html here um, remove all that default content here um, and um, let's uh, start adding the code um, and include the output of our um, to-do overview component here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to include a div element here and assign uh, the class container. Give it an ID here, okay. Um, then I'm using another div here and assigning the class of cart. That's again a bootstrap class. And uh, then I'm using a div with cart body um, then an h3 uh, which class assigned card dash title like so saying to do app here um, then um, i'm including an h6 assigning um, card um, minus subtitle class um, and maybe mb-2 and text-muted. Then I'm including the text using uh, Angular and Redux here as a headline. So and now I can include um, app to do overview here. This is uh, the element which is including the output of my to-do overview components template here. Okay, so let's save it. 
and now I can go back here and now you can see, okay, here is the first part of my application, the headline, uh, the status information here with the last update and total items. Total items is zero at the moment, of course, um, because we are in the initial state and then I have the delete all button here I can click on. Uh, so you can uh, see the last update information is uh, um, is appearing here and total items of course remains uh, zero. Okay, now we need to add uh, the second component and that is a to-do list component which includes two things. Um, the form which is used to input uh, or to enter new to-do elements in our application and the list output is a table output which includes uh, all the to-do items uh, one per row. Okay, so to add that new form to our application, again I'm using uh, the Angular uh, CLI here. Uh, this time I'm saying ngg component, and the name of that component should be to do dash list. Okay, so you can see um, same procedure here again. Four new files are added in the new folder to do dash list, <clears throat> which is available here in the app folder. Um, and uh, the new component is automatically added to our app module. Um, so we are ready to go now. Uh, the four new files are here. So we can start the implementation. But before doing so, as this component should include an Angular form because we want, uh, um, we would like to offer a form where the user can input new um, to do data, we need to import the Angular Forms module into our application. And the right place to do so is um, right here in app.module.ts. Um, let's add um, another module here. Um, first, the import statement. So it's forms module, and we are importing forms module from. Um, a package which is called at angular slash form. Okay, that's one of the angular core packages. And then we need to add forms module here to the imports array um, as well. Okay, like so. Now we are ready to go. A forms module is imported and uh, we can start implementing the uh, to-do list component here right in uh, the TS file. Um, okay, here we are. So first of all, let's uh, add all the needed import statements here. So we need to import LNG Redux again. We need to import the select decorator again. Um, um, it's imported from add Angular dash Redux slash store. Then we need to import um, our um, iApp state interface here from um, uh, store.ts. Next I'd need to import um, Um, the action types I'd like to use here in that component, and that is at underscore to do, remove underscore to do, and of course toggle underscore to do. Um, all those action types are imported from actions.ts, like so. Um, and finally, I need to import the i to do interface this one is imported from the um, to do dot ts okay so and that are my import statements here um, then the first thing um, i can do here in the constructor i can inject ng redux service again so private ng redux of type ng redux um, i app state okay um, like so and then I would like to have access to um, 
the uh, store property to do's here. So I'm using the add select the decorator again and define a class property which is called to do's. So it's the same name um, as a store property here. Um, then, as I would like to use a template driven form, um, I'm defining um, a model property here which is of type I. Uh, to do and then when implementing that form in uh, my template file later on I can bind my input properties here to the model properties and let's um, initialize uh, this model uh, give it an ID of uh, zero description is an empty string responsible is an empty string priority should be low by default and is completed should be false by default okay <clears throat> so next let's implement the event handler functions we do need um, in uh, to-do list component class uh, first of all I need a submit fun um, method here so on Submit. Okay, and uh, this method is called every time the user submits the uh, to do entry form. And to add uh, the new to do element, um, which is available here in model, to our um, store, to the to do's. Um, array within our store, we need to um, dispatch the corresponding action. Um, and in that case, it's, um, oh, I have a typo here, it's um, the add to do action. So what I need to say here is this dot ng redux dot dispatch. Um, I'm using the type here add do and then I'm passing in as a payload here uh, with my action object the uh, new to do element um, was property to do and this is set to this dot model okay next we need um, the event handler method toggle to do and this method is taking in a parameter which is uh, the current to-do item for which the is completed property should be toggled so um, how to do that again we need to call this dot ng redux dispatch um, this time i'm dispatching an action of type toggle to do and as a payload i'm adding the id here ID okay so add semicolons here as well and the last um, event handler method I do need is the uh, um, method I call remove to do no should not be should not be remove underscore to do just remove to do so let's pass in the to do element I'd like to remove and then dispatch the corresponding action to the store. It's type remove underscore to do. And as a payload, we are passing in the ID of the action we would like to remove. Okay, so it's the same here to do dot ID. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to the template um, here in to do dash list.component.html, uh, removing the default HTML uh, code which is inside that file here, available, uh, and then starting over with implementing our uh, new template. Um, first, let's use an HL6 element to define a headline here which should be created to do. So the first thing we would like to implement is a, um, a form. 
So I do need a form element here. Um, okay. Um, the ng submit event should be bound to the uh, on submit event handler method. And then I need to define the uh, to do form template um, vari variable here and um, assign the string ng form. Okay, within that form element, uh, let's start with a diff, and the diff should uh, be um, assigned a class which is called form row. Um, okay, then another diff inside with a class called auto. So these are all Bootstrap 4 classes. Um, and uh, then I'd like to define my first input element here. Um, so it's input and this should be of type text, like so. <clears throat> then I'd like to assign the class form control here. Uh, let's say we would like to have a placeholder here, which is uh, saying description. The ID is description. And then I'm connecting um, here my input control to uh, my um, model. And that is done by binding ng model in both ways to model dot description. So this is two way data binding here. Um, I need to give it a name, which is description as well. And I need to define the description um, template variable here and I'm assigning ng model here. Uh, so, okay, let's close it. Uh, that is my first input element. Maybe we can break it a little bit down here. So, okay. So the next element, let's copy uh, that section here and insert it a second time uh, for the second input element. Um, should be for the responsible. So we are changing the placeholder here. The ID as well. So the data binding is done for model.responsible. The name is responsible in that case. And uh, the name of the template variable is responsible as well. Okay. So uh, the next input element should be a select element so that the user can select the priority by selecting from a drop-down list um, if the priority should be low, medium, or high. Um, let's start with a new diff here. Again, the class call dash auto should be assigned here. Um, okay, and then I need a select element. Um, we are assigning the class form dash control again. ID is priority. We are binding um, the value of that input element to um, model dot priority, um, giving it a name of priority. and defining the template variable here. 
Okay. So that's the select element. Okay, let's make it a little bit more readable here. So, okay, within that select element, we now need three options. So the first option is low. Um, next is medium. And finally, final option here is uh, high. Okay, like so. And then the last input element is the submit button. So again, a div of column called dash auto. And within the div, let's uh, define that button here. Should be of class btn and uh, btn dash primary. Okay. Great. So type of that button should be submit. Okay, here we are. So to check if um, everything in our template, um, what we have uh, implemented so far is working, um, I'm adding um, this child component to app.component.html as well. So I'm including here a new element app to do list. Okay. And then I'm going back to the browser. Um, as you can see here, it's saying we have a template pass error. Uh, app to do list is an unknown element. Okay, there is a typo, no problem. It's to do list. Okay, here we are. Now you can see um, the output is containing um, both the output of our first component and the output of our second component here. Um, now I'm ready to uh, use the form here and let's say to do item one and create new elements and you can see it here. This new element is added obviously to our store. The total items count is now one, but of course we cannot see that element because we have no um, table output included uh, yet. And uh, that is the next thing we are going to add to the template code of to do uh, list component. Um, the table output. So let's switch back to the code um, and open up to do dash list dot component dot html again and uh, let's start adding more template code here. So let's start with a new headline here. Now should be in h6 instead. So and uh, the headline here is to do's list. Um, and then I do need a first div element here, and uh, we're using that div to include uh, the ng if directive here and assign the following expression. So to do's, we are reading out the to do's array from the store. So we need to uh, use the async pipe here again. Okay, and then read out the length property, um, which uh, should Um, be not zero because we only want to display the table which is following now inside the div if we have to do items in that to do's array and if that is not the case the complete section which is included here should not be visible and that is exactly what we are achieving by using the ngif directive here okay so now uh, let's implement uh, the table um, 
and uh, let's start with a t hat element inside of uh, the table here and assign the class t hat uh, dash inverse like so so table row and then we have a th element here the first one is including the id uh, Uh, the second one is including the to-do description. Um, next one is risk, uh, including the uh, headline for the responsible column. And uh, the last one uh, um, is including the headline for priority. And then I need one column in addition, which has no headline because that is a column where I would like to place the delete button, which should be available for each row in my table. Okay, so um, here, um, right behind uh, the closing tag of uh, the T head element, let's start with uh, T body. And um, within T body, I'm using the uh, TR element, the table row element, and I'm uh, using here the NG4 directive to loop over the to do's array and print out one tr element which corresponds to one row in the table for each to-do item available in my to-dos array. Uh, so I need to assign the following expression string here, let t of to-dos and now again um, the async pipe here. Okay. And now I'm inside my row and then I can print out all the uh, information in my row which I do need for uh, the uh, five columns I have defined here in my table. So I do need um, a few TD elements here. So one, two, three, four, five. So in the first um, column, Let's use the spawn element here and uh, yes, let's uh, print out uh, t.id So in the second column we are printing out um, T description. Next column we are printing out T dot uh, responsible. And priority. Um, okay. So we can check it here in the output. Um, let's insert a new to-do item. Okay, here we are. You can see the table output is available. I can insert a second item here, maybe put it to medium and I get a second row here. So next let's add the button here. Uh, should be of class btn and btn primary again. Okay, and uh, the click event of that button is connected to the remove to do um, event handler method, and we are passing in the current to do item as t here and uh, the button contains the text to delete. 
Okay, and now with that button, let's check it out here in the result. I'm able to delete that item. And you can see here, as I delete that item, the total items count is again going back to zero. So the information in my second component here is automatically updated as both components are accessing the same store. So let's um, change the output of the priority information um, a little bit. I'd like to uh, get that output as a colored batch. Uh, so let's... Um, Let's uh, remove uh, that here. And we will do the following here. We will have a span element here. And the first span element is outputting um, the batch in green color for a low priority. So we're using the ngif directive here and say t dot priority. Uh, should be equal to low. If this is the case, we are assigning the class batch and batch uh, dash success. And we are printing out low. Now we need to copy that spawn element here and insert it a second and a third time here for the corresponding priority values, so medium and um, high. Medium, high, and as I would like to um, have a different color here, I need to change uh, the second CSS class here for medium, it's batch dash uh, warning to display it in an orange color and for high it should be displayed in a red color so I'm assigning batch dash uh, danger here. Try it out again. So item one with low priority. Now you can see it's displaying a batch in green color. Adding a second item medium you can see the orange color here a third item with priority set to high in red color uh, so now you can see the total items count is three always updated the last update information is also always updated and i can use the delete all button here of course to delete all the items from the list so back in our code one last function is missing. The user should have the option to toggle the is completed state. And to uh, do so, the user should be able to click on either the ID, the description, or the responsible text information. Um, and the toggle should be executed. So let's add a click event handler here to the spawn tag. Um, and this click event handler is connected to the toggle um, to do event handler method and we are passing in the current um, to do object here. Let's copy that uh, addition and insert it here in the second spawn element and the third spawn element as well. And now what should happen? Um, of course, the toggle to do function is uh, turning the is completed information for that to do element in the store to the opposite. So if is completed is false, it's turning it to true. And if it's true already, it's uh, toggling back to false. Um, the user should be aware of the state by displaying um, the uh, to do item if it is completed already with uh, um, line through, so the description and the responsible and ID should be displayed in line through mode. Um, if is completed, it's not set. So if it is uh, false, uh, line through should be gone, of course. So um, we are achieving that um, behavior by using the binding syntax here and defining class dot completed. Okay, um, and assigning the following string t dot is completed. So only when this expression is true, the completed class is set here. So we apply that to all three 
elements here. Okay, and then finally, of course, we need to um, define the completed uh, CSS class. And we can do that in uh, the to do dash list dot component dot CSS uh, file here and say class completed um, text dash decoration should be line through. Okay, so check it in the browser again. Let's insert again sample item here. If I now click on it, you can see it's displayed um, line through. So the is completed property is set. And if I click again on this element, uh, the line through style is taken away, is completed is again set to false. So everything is working as expected. And now you can see the real power of using Redux. Um, in this application, we are only dealing with two components so far. So it's easy to keep the overview. But I'm very sure you can imagine if your application is growing and you have a lot of components and all components try to work on the same data and you are trying to keep everything up to date. It's very easy to work with the Redux uh, pattern here, storing all the information in a centralized store and then all the components can um, work with that store and uh, um, all components share the same um, current set of data and um, yeah, it's very easy to, um, to keep the overview if your application is growing. Okay, so we are done. So this was Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this new tutorial. And uh, if you do like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Uh, that would be very great. Also, don't forget to visit my website at codingthesmartway.com. And I hope very much to see you back in the next video. So stay tuned. Bye.